Well, uh, the world marker. I want to make sure. Okay, we're on shared. We're good. Start this over. I don't care. I'm hungry. All right, jokes for food. I, I wish a philanthropist YouTuber would just give me 10k and not film it. Hey, hey, the hell happened to you, Mr. Beast? That's what happened to me. What we do here is go back, 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 back. I was gonna be somebody. I was gonna be this. Carl did my job. Carl did my job. I'm the worst production I've ever been in the movie. Dog packs going, oh, there's a cameraman causing women to be uncomfortable because of allegations that those employees sent to him, you know, privately. And this guy also has some information. I'm, I'm not going to react to a lot of this just yet, but I'm telling you, like, he doesn't have enough information right off the bat. It's just kind of goofy and weird. But I guess we just gotta just take it for what it is. I'm not gonna take it as seriously until you know stuff gets confirmed. But for right now, I don't care too much. Oh, and also what I said before, my stream stopped working correctly. I, that, that, this is my third attempt tonight. No, fourth. Yeah, one was a like a minute. I deleted it. Um, I said that the only reason I'm watching this is because of the. Um, he said more pedophiles on the thumbnail. That's something that I'm concerned about reviewing this video. Okay. Because Content I'm against that. Again. So just before I get into my interrogation right. with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle, uh, a lot has happened since my last video. Uh, after posting, I got hundreds of messages from former Mr. Beast employees, um, and I had them all like send proof of former employment. You know, just people showing their support or telling their stories of, of you know, fake videos or unsafe. That's videos. plenty for the video. Some, you know, toxic workplace, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really going to get into those claims because, for one, like... Maybe I'll learn something today. Else, which I understand. I, and also, like, I think most of that stuff's just been covered with, with, you know, the news coming out about Beast Games and everything. I, and also, I have, like, more serious allegations that I want to start covering. Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly respond with part two, you know, like a like this double is down like Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What what does he know? Um, so I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes uh, and i'll make sure to give you full credit and, and plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that uh, so yeah i've gotten dozens <laughs> of messages from former mr beast employees of, of, of put his face all over allegations so i just want to put a call to action and start this video that you know if you have a story you can dm me just uh, make sure you send uh, proof of employment first because i get a lot of dms uh, and like as much as I meme and joke around, like I take anonymity very seriously. So without explicit permission, I don't go public with anything. And obviously, if it goes to court, I don't. I would hope they would censor your information from the court documents. I don't know. Uh, oh, and former contestants too. That's another thing I heard after posting my last. I'm just video. gonna sit here and eat high chew while watching these. This video. Uh, That's what we do. People corroborating the same story that the the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You, know, you you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and then, and then you try to f them. Okay, that, <laughs> <laughs> that seems really dark now. No, it's not dark. You misunderstanding me, bro. I'm, okay. I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. <laughs> because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the thing right. is, is she's not going to say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. Anyway, so... That will be part three. So, you know, uh, Mr. Beast, do with that information what you will. I know uh, Chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations. So anyway, my interview with Jake Weddle, um, I chose to interview him because I thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 and 2020. And also, what people don't know is that he came back in 2021 to be the sole contestant of a Mr. Beast video, which never got uploaded because it went very badly. Uh, he also knows about another um, portable document format who, who was working at Mr. Beast while, while actually on the registry. 
Uh, and, and I'll get more into that story at the end of the video. Uh, so I got his DM, drove straight to New York overnight, did not sleep, just drank a bunch of caffeine. And, and I also only had one uh, microphone in the interview, which he's wearing. So it's mostly just him talking. Also like final thing, people said my last video started slow. This video also starts slow. It, it, it you know, it builds up over time, but I'll do the retention thing and say, uh, the ending will blow your mind. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jake Weddle, everybody. I'm Jake Weddle. Uh, most people, if you, if you know me from Mr. Beast, I'm, I'm a deep Do they all just look like that? Because, look uh, like clones? Sometimes, maybe, purposefully, through floor, a lot of the time. Uh, but I've, I've been in some videos, I've worked on a lot of them. Uh, I was there from 2019 to 2020, 2021-ish, when I came back and did some more. I was there when they were authentic, and then I saw the transition to what I feel like is a company. He's like a TV show now. It went from, it went from YouTuber guy with a camera to... Uh, Amazon. The culture around there was Ooh. very unspoken. Amazon? That's pretty good. There was a vibe. There was half the people who, if you made Jimmy happy, you were on the good half. And these people got random bonuses and uh, were usually moved up, had more screen time. Uh, and then there was people who, if you had a disagreement or butt heads with Jimmy or just you didn't like it, you know, you were the other half. And uh, I consistently was in the half that Jimmy did. Jimmy didn't like me. That's fine. I don't like him either. It's okay. Uh, oh, that's just so good to say. I don't like Jimmy. I, I hate you so much. Uh, he didn't want anyone to get more popular or have more of a a way out necessarily. Like, oh, I'm doing my Twitch thing on the side. Don't do that because you could get famous and leave and talk about me negatively. Uh, and I could tell that the yes men were, you know, doing well. Jake the Viking got out early. Oh, there's we got nothing against each other. Jake the Viking knew. I have a weird feeling he always knew. And uh, I was, you know, disgruntled uh, for quite some time. So I've talked to reporters, right, like publicly. And I've always had to choose my words very, very carefully because I don't want to say anything I don't stand behind, obviously. So I used to talk to people. I used to glaze Jimmy publicly for things I do genuinely think are true. Uh, but then it's like, well, how can we just talk about the working conditions? Well, I wanted a career. I didn't want to, you know, speak ill of YouTube's golden boy. And then I'm blacklisted forever. I, I, I tell people I was talking to you, they go, oh, what are you doing? You're going to kill your career. It's like, I have to or I'll be sad. Uh, this is the moment we're going to talk about it. So uh, as far as that, uh, that's my covering up of why we didn't talk about XYZ sooner. But now you know. What, what would you say? He seems a little, a little right? jumpy with his word when he's talking. He's like, oh, it's a good now you know. I'm like, bro, slow down. It's okay. Just say what you need to say. I don't know. He seems kind of jumpy. Fake this video that I worked on while I was there. This is the extent of the, the fakeness that I was involved with. In. Uh, admitting to my complacency. I was a writer there, and we were working on a video, uh, crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or uh, something. It was, it was a rock or a meteor in the title of it. I can't remember, but he wanted to do a prank where, unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddle's car. We're gonna take another yeah. meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have no idea that we're doing this. Weddle and Marcus are probably shot. They had no idea. And so that was the one and only time I had to, huh, my car, what? And on the fly, I saw him, uh, cause Marcus was in that video. So Marcus is calling his mom. Marcus genuinely had no idea. He was, he was he genuinely had no idea. But, uh, so Marcus is calling his mom and his mom's freaking out. And I'm like, oh no, they're gonna call my mom next. So I had to text my mom, who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, I text my mom, I go, I go, mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. And then I hit send, and then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> and I call my mom and I tell her, and oh, she should have got the Oscar. Oh my god, on the fly, she goes, what? I'm on vacation. Mom? My car has been um, destroyed. Wait, what? <laughs> a meteor hit it. Jacob, I'm on vacation. Do you understand? And we're back in third quarter wow. planning. Adams is quarterbacking this project. Uh, but uh, yeah, I did that video, and they're supposed to give me 10k to put a down payment on a uh, new car, and they wanted me to get like a big flashy new car. 10k was supposed to be a down payment. And uh, I can't afford a big flashy new car because I work at Mr. Beast. <laughs> this is pretty annoying. I'm not saying he's annoying, but overall, it's fucking annoying what it is. It's like, who cares, bro? At the end of the day, nobody cares. So uh, I, I couldn't get anything. I couldn't afford the taxes on. I couldn't get anything. They shouldn't. On. Um, so I put a rock on your car. Mom van. 
that I could afford. And uh, Jimmy was like, why didn't you get a cooler car? I was like, I, what do you, I can't afford that, bro. Come on, what are you talking about? You know, if I was working on a TV show in the 90s, on a show that was a quarter as successful, I could retire today. But now I make dog shit pay, uh, making gajillionaires more money. And uh, I just walked into the writer's room. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I left was because I just walked in there uh, and asked for not necessarily a gajillion dollars, but maybe a salary that was more proportional to the work I was doing given how much revenue that work was doing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I talked about that and I talked about the Writers Guild and how this is what the Writers Guild industry standard is for the streaming internet content with ads. I thought that was the closest thing to YouTube and I didn't even bring up residuals because, oh my God, if I got residuals for every video I worked on, Boy, howdy, I can retire, but... Uh, like, uh, he's so extra. The, the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there, uh, older comic... Does he really uh, like this? I'm just being honest. Does he really like this in person? Boy, hell yeah! Like, does he really like that? Jeez. <laughs> he's so over the top. And uh, I got paid more than him, and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job. And uh, I'm some 20 year old fucking white guy. Oh, I forgot to mention, I just got up from a nap. I've been trying to do this for the past hour. Made food, ate food. I'm stretching because my body's still like, oh shit, yeah. I was crumpled up in a little ball over here. That's also something that all of my intro is gone because it fucking didn't work correctly until I reset the box. So, again, I apologize. And, uh, okay. One of the things I, I didn't like about the way some of the V stuff shook out was yeah. is he gonna cry what's going on i feel really guilty but the way it just like shook out um what's going on with this guy yeah i was talking to this other writer like it's, it's fucked up you know that that's how the pay is and i want you to get paid more you know because you deserve to get paid more you know i'm a kid um and he didn't want to rock the boat he, did, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat he's just I, I like my job. I like my job because when you, when, you, when you grow up with you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So you want to rock the boat. But he said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like if that's like, I, I trust you. Um, he, he stood with me. He went to that writer's he went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew... Mm. If I knew he was going to lose his job too, I wouldn't have done it. Me, I was over the moon. I was like, you're going to give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> you know, I don't get to deal with the... With the you know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day, you know? And I get to go, go home and you get it, you're gonna pay me to leave. I was over the moon. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he, was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? And I really, regr I really regret that. But, you know, me and him are really still tight. We're still good friends. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. Oh, wait, you said you only had two mics. No, no, yeah. Is he talking and they had to enhance his audio? So maybe he was feeling better? Honestly? Yeah, they did that. The best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> now that he's a very, very far removed from all this crazy shit, I guess. Do you think Jimmy really enjoys doing good and helping people? I think Jimmy wants to be... The or does he do a fake... He no, 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 he's doing a recreation of him asking the questions is what I think he's doing. He's laser focused on one goal. Um, and I think... Whatever he has to do to achieve that goal, he'll do. And I think it was the smartest decision for him that he calculated, because he's very good with numbers. If I donate to charity, people can't say I'm shitty. If I donate to, if I give this homeless guy 10K, what do you mean I'm a bad guy? But I've always thought... He's Mr. Monopoly. If something nice for somebody... And you could be good with numbers and not have a fucking brain on top of your head. You could be so smart, but dumb as fuck. Because basically, I'm not saying that. He, he might be. Jimmy might be, actually be like one of the smart dumbasses. Like he has such, such an intense knowledge. 
for one thing, but he doesn't have the the human side that's necessary to be able to keep this shit going. Maybe I don't know. Face while you do it. it. You didn't do a nice thing for somebody. You you gained something. You there was a homeless guy on the street, and you saw an opportunity for yourself, mm -hmm. your image. That's what and I see too. You. That's you what I see. One guy ten thousand dollars who needed it to eat, and now the revenue you ge generated from that video is way more than what you gave. I think when he's generating There was actually a, 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 um, a moment where I was watching his videos and all I saw was mostly like, look at me being nice to this homeless person, smiling. I'm thinking, why happens when they turn the cameras off? You know? Why happens when nobody really cares to make a video about them? The least authentic thing in the world. There, there, there's an element of, you know, oh, hey, you're crying. That's so good for camera. You know, I'm so glad he is. If you're crying because you're so thankful that you got X, Y, Z, and then you go, oh, that's so, I'm so glad he needed it that bad so I could come in and, oh, can you, can you cry more? Oh, it's so good for the camera if you could. Oh, I just did. It made me uncomfortable that I was working there, and I didn't like it, and I vocalized it sometimes. And I think that's why I wasn't on camera as much as they said I was going to be. Uh, I was told at one point that I was going to be like fourth banana. You know, it was going to be Jimmy, Chris, Chandler. Oh, you don't like that. crying? And that never happened. Sorry. I talking about that. Like, hey, I thought my contract said XYZ. Uh, and then I got the severance checks. So, you know, whatever. I'll that resort. So after your severance checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? Right. So so in videos where I was uh, appearing in later, that that's why you keep nice publicly. If, you, if you're nice in public... Hey, Jake was nice in public. Let's have him back for something. You know? Yeah, sure. So I was, I was hoping they call back. You know? And uh, I appeared in some videos after I left. I think one of them was a, a, a three days at a maximum security prison. Uh, if I did do many challenges in that, I got paid. I was, you know, clocked in with a with a rate, and I would get paid and compensated for those. Uh, but there was one video I was in. I got I got paid a lot for, it, but it didn't uh, it, it didn't come out. Uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't come out because it didn't go well. There, there was a video um, that came out probably like a year ago, something like that. It was, it was the, uh, it got a lot of hot water when it came out. It was the, uh, the like surviving like ten thousand dollars every day you survive in solitary or surviving solitary for whatever. It was, just, it was like one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, what? You shouldn't do that. And if people don't know that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me. You know what this sounds like to me? It's like Fallout, where they say, okay, you can have whatever um, Fallout shelter you want, we can do whatever weird experiments we want to humanity. That's what it sounds like, it feels like, after a while, you're like, he's just, you're just a bunch of lab rats for him. That might be it. Who knows? He's crying. He's crying a lot. Moving to New York, and I worked at a couple of. Here, I think I know why. Because he was dropped, taken to the highest point, dropped, taken to the highest point, dropped. I mean, for any human being psychologically. Whether you're a content creator or not, or you're this big person, that fucks with your head, and it becomes like a daily like um, obsession. But I can tell this guy's lost a lot of sleep over this shit. I'm not tell you I know, but I can just tell I know the look. So, yeah, I'm actually happy or glad he's not in a worse place right now in his life. That's really sad. Even if, you know, maybe some of his reactions might be a little over the top, but still, it's really sad. And I had a little bit of change in my pocket, you know, the most change I had in my pocket ever, you know? Small potatoes, you know, compared to beast bullshit, but, you know, I thought I had enough to, to move to New York or whatever. And uh, I, I get a call uh, from somebody over there, and they go, hey, they want you for a video. I was like, oh, amazing, great, cool, thank God. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what, what's the video? And they tell me the print, the pitch. And they, they, they try to make the pitch sound like it's going to be like a walk in the park. Uh, the pitch is uh, 100 days in solitary confinement, 
uh, but don't worry, like you only have to last like 30, we have like a video. And they're pitching it like a, oh, at first it's gonna be like a luxury vacation. You're gonna have like a hot tub and an ice cream machine. And like part of the video is gonna be you deciding like what, what, what items am I gonna get rid of, you know, today? And it has like the choice. They were like, uh, it's only going to be bad for maybe the last like five days tops when you have like nothing left. You're the first, it's going to be like a breeze for most of it. And uh, by the end of it, after 30 days, you're going to get $300,000 because it's $10,000 a day. And I don't know, man. I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, blah, 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 excuse me, you, I'll yell dance for you if you put that kind of money in my face, sure. They were like, you're gonna be locked in this room and we gotta make sure you're on all the time. We're gonna have cameras on you all the time and you're perfect for this because you never shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, on, on paper, I was like, okay, I can do this. And, and I was, they always they always cut me out of the videos. They always, and I was, you know, editors have told me that uh, it's because you have too much of a personality. And so with this video, I thought, okay, this is perfect. So he, he is like this. He is like this. Can't cut me out of. I'm the guy. And so I thought, well, if I have to do this, if I have to do solitary confinement in order to do the things I want to do, then I will do that. That I held my tongue and I swallowed my pride and I tried to do one, one, one last ride. Uh, and uh, I get there. And at first it's fine. And uh, I mean, they, they had just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know, which that's probably not good. You know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. Uh, it looked good on the visual. Like the key looks good on camera. You know, it's movie magic bullshit. It was a terrible facility. I mean, it was in one of the studios. The they had to like get like a separate like tank for you know septic stuff. Uh, oh. Yeah, there was a hot tub in it. Yeah, there was an ice cream machine. Oh. But things look <laughs> cool and funny on paper, but when you think about stuff, a hot tub that's not connected to a filtration system. Give it three days, it's gonna stink. You know, if there's not a, like a hot water mechanism, so the, the hot tub was a lukewarm tub at best, which I was a silly complaint, but the shower was always cold, and you, you're taking like a quick shower, and, and I had cameras 24-7 on me, and the ice cream machine, let's talk about that for a second, the ice cream machine has two... This is like McDonald's. We, we have an ice cream machine. It's not a good one. It's rigged. It's all rigged. Reeking of smelly dairy mildew, like so. I got to choose which sense was assaulted at a time. I, I couldn't have all of them good. Uh, so the the little things started to build up. You know, there was like a, 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 the bug thing wasn't like terrible, but it was a factor. And like at first it was fine, you know. And you're you're, you're playing it up, like because you know it's a video. Why is he showing himself visually uncomfortable after that? The bug thing. He's like, mm, that's funny. It got to a point where like. They weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them... Not funny in a... I'm not laughing, more like... It's interesting. And they said no, because it would fuck up the time-lapse shots. The time-lapse of what? Me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a... a they're going, you're going to get XYZ hours of sunlight. Oh, great! Why well, don't know how they figured that one out? I didn't have it! <laughs> you know, one of the things was you got to take away your clock, so you didn't know what time it was. Okay, I got no access to sun. I got no access to clock. I don't know, like, the the, the lights are on me all the time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sleeping. I I could not sleep, and I I have insomnia problems now. I get so, it. I, I, you see his eyes. You see this. You see his eyes. I said he's been losing sleep, and then he admits it now. He's wired up. Started there. I had good people looking out for me. Poor guy. <laughs> He needs he needs a hug. Stop. He needs a hug. I, uh, I just wanted to turn the lights off. Not by me, just somebody. Vocalizing to people. I wish the lights would turn off. And I go up to my friend, my my, my, my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. <laughs> oh, oh, good. <laughs> 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're giving me, you know, melatonin, you know, it's not helping, you know, and then, and then Jimmy would come in like every other day for like an hour, you know, to check in on me because he's doing other stuff. You know, I'm just the, the guy in the cage over here. He'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, and so he'd come by, he'd get the shots, he'd leave. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note for the director over the phone that would really piss me off. 
This is the note I got from the director, from Jimmy, uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? Did they did research on him? Do a take of that? They really just like profiled him just to do that to him. They pretend to make it genuine. Ugh, that is pretty bad. I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll oh, you want your student loans paid off? You'll be in this cage. And you have you have power over people. When one person doesn't have resources the other one does and they, they hold it over your head and you go of course of course yeah I agreed to it I needed it of course and there's something about like having the cameras on me all the time like I was I was I was not having a good time but we were filming a video so I was trying my best to be funny you know I'm, I got, I'm a dark comic yeah I got, I got bits about I had a very traumatic life uh, I have my, 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 my dad is in jail for sexual assault of a minor, you know? So this kind of stuff is very near and dear to my heart. You know, I don't fuck around with this shit. Yeah, I, I have jokes about that in my act. You know, I, I joke about it because, you know, that's what you do in a traumatic experience. You know, I, I have abusive relationships. I get out of it. The first thing I do is I, I do a type I'm about it. You know, so I'm in this situation where I, my, my mental health is not good. My physical health is getting worse. But we're filming. So I'm doing bits. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for making fun of him. I'm sorry for making fun of him. I relate more and more to him that he's talking to certain things. I'm not not the same exact, but I'm starting to understand his personality more and why he got caught up in this stuff. Which I mean, thinking about the way I am, I might have somebody offered me this stuff. You know, that's what's crazy. It's true. Which, if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera, but if it was it was too real. If they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? You know, if, if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse to it for 10 seconds? Coding boot camps require you to quit your job. What if you could earn income? Did you uh, try to get out? Yes. I was starting to calculate. Um, oh, I don't know if I could do a third. I'm sorry. Get some drink also. Just kind of like. People do something about the way it feels like people put you to work and they just forget about you, let you stay back there, or they put you through what they put you through and they forget that you're human. This is like one of my core things that I really like hate is if someone's dehumanized at all. It doesn't matter what it is or in what capacity, where your basic sleep, eat, drink, like you know, really basics, and then just like treat you like you fucking matter a little bit, like you have a voice. No, none of that was being regarded. Really sad. Thirty. Uh, uh, how much uh, can I? Well, how how can I manage to get out of here sooner uh, and still have a video and still uh, have some cash and um. Get the plug, man. I, I just, I just, I did. Since we're doing time lapse shots, and since they insisted on time lapse shots, I said, all right, we're gonna do time lapse shots, bet. I put my, I put my YouTube on, on with the whiteboard they gave me. And I was like, all right, yeah, scrub, go ahead and scrub that footage. You know, you got that whiteboard. Oh, oh, no, either that goes in, or this footage is unusable, and then, you know. James Warren came in and erased it, you know, fucking, you know, don't, don't put that, don't, hey, we can torture him, don't you dare let him get a plug in there, you know? Uh, so, uh, it, like, we were playing up the joke, you know, it's like, oh, I'm the boy in the cage, you know, whatever. Well, just duplicate it. I'm gonna find his channel. Uh, on, on with the white I'm gonna find his channel. Uh, 
Jake Weddle. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Thank I like his background. That's really cool. Y'all should subscribe to him. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna check out his videos later, but yeah. Just, uh, actually, I should copy it. I'm gonna copy his channel. Put it in stream. I don't care. I'm gonna take as long as I'm gonna take on this on this because it's it's kind of like you gotta pick it apart. You have to analyze all of this very carefully. But this guy does not deserve to be treated like this. Okay. He does not deserve to just be thrown out like that. I don't care. Look, I'll play Who are you? It's fine. He didn't just do anything that wrong. Jokes. I have jokes about my dad because I love jokes from my dad. I'll joke about my dad all the time. I guess piece of shit. I made up. Uh, I have friends that make fun of my dad. That's fine because I know their intent. I know where they're coming from. When Jimmy jokes with my dad, and I sometimes see weird. I don't like it. We were doing that one of those hide and seek videos again, you know. At the time, they were a lot realer, uh, so I got caught. And when you get caught, you know, you go to the you go to, you go to the place where you get caught. And uh, I, I don't know if there's footage of this. I don't know if you know, I, don't, I definitely didn't make the final cut. Uh, but he, he says to me, uh, "All right, you're going to jail. You know, like your dad." And like, it's a joke. But when my my friends do it, it's fine. And, and Jimmy just wasn't my friend. It's a, spe it's a sense of closeness, so now, trust. I'm locked in a cage at his whim. And I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. And I got these cameras on me all the time. And I was unwell. I had editors coming up to me. <laughs> Said, you good, bud? No. And I was like, yeah, boy. You're clearly unwell. Uh, and he goes, uh, well, because the footage you're sending in is haunting. Because <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, but I am mentally decaying, so I'm doing bits. Someone said there is a horror cut uh, of a video in this. And I'm thinking, like, who's watching this? Like, who, who wants to see this? What is fun about this, the video? And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in here. Um, Jimmy comes in and, uh. I'm asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in, he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? And he goes, oh, because this, this one's for today, you know, and this one's for the challenge. And I go, that's the challenge today. He goes, you're going to you're gonna run a marathon. You're going to do 22.6K, whatever it is. And you're going to do it on that treadmill over there. Oh. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube. And I'm, I'm, I'm not classic. I'm dumb. I don't, I don't why, why is this all putting me back to being in Salvation Army? There was moments or... F oh, multiple instances when I was in rehab where I felt like that. Where I didn't get enough sleep. And they just had told you to keep going. They didn't care. It's like, it's not as bad as this, what it sounds like, but it, it's putting me back in that, that space, that mental space. Uh, so your first challenge Rubik's Cube, I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. Ugh. I don't want to camera, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, I can't do it either, I can't fucking do a Rubik's Cube. Like, the, the, there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in-house. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, Jake's, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard because we know he's, uh, we know he's... I couldn't say no to the to treadmill thing. Yeah. So I, 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 people who run marathons train forever and it's still hard. Again, writer. Do I look like I run? I don't run, you know, let alone a marathon, let alone that train for it. So I was in a sunlightless, you know, struggling with complicated content and editing software. Sure. I was too. Riverside really simplified things.
Do you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice, or? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing, and based on all the other stuff, like, they gotta, there was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? You, you know? And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, the last the whole video, I guess the budget's, you know, so much money. If you don't do it, you won't be cool. You won't be like the cool people on YouTube. I'm flames, because Jeff doesn't want to do the thing. I don't know. And so I wanted to be a good sport, and I wanted to get the boost, and I want the cash, and so I start running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks, and I, I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. I got off the treadmill. Oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe, it's all over, just these big red... I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My, my, my muscles were like just like the lactic acid. I, I. Oh shit. I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I mean, that's when um, yeah, uh, get the psych in, and I talk to the psych about how I'm uh, not well, and uh. Like I said, there was this is Fallout. No, this is Fallout. I'm pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work. And uh, they, they, would, they would tell me, they'd be like, uh, yeah, everyone knows you over there. Everybody loves you. they go, uh, oh, Jake, well, I love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. And I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys going to keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like, at least seven more days? No, no. And they didn't let me leave right away either. They wanted to make sure, you know, everything was fine. So I just, you know, slept for a while. They turned the lights off. <laughs> and uh, they, they brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know? That's like, that's like, um, if you leave music on, if anybody plays music, I can't sleep. Okay, now I know why I'm going back to being in rehab, because there were people who would bring their phones or sneak their phones in, and they would play their music in the middle of the night or be up all night having conversations as loud as possible. And I went five, six days with, like, almost no sleep at all, pretty much, like, maybe max. I had total eight hours, maybe, but it was like I would sleep for, like, a few 20 minutes or whatever and wake back up. Maybe you get a five minute there. It was broken up so fucking much in five, six days that I broke down kind of like him, but I got really angry. Like, I was very angry. I was like, I was ready to kill somebody angry because I just wanted it to end. That was actually not in, so that was not Salvation Army. That was the first rehab. They had to send me to a hospital for a little bit. Plus, not only did you not be get time to sleep, you had to get up at like five or six and go do chores and then to go to classes. You were basically wired up and had to do all these things all day. You basically had to just cram coffee because you they didn't let you sleep. And then, you know, then you had chores at the end of the night too. And seeing him and the way he's describing, it's like, that's so similar. It's so similar, but it's not the same. His experience is unique. He, he is a unique person. But I do understand the depravity and desperation that it put him into, all because he wanted to just be able to function and keep going. And he didn't want to get kicked out, and then he ended up having to just call it in. That sucks. I'm so sorry that happened to him. And this is already halfway through this whole video. I guess this video is really is just focusing on what Jimmy does to these people. He is the warden. I mean, not a warden. He's the he's the he's the cell keeper. That's what he is. He really embodied exactly what they said they were going to put him through, but not in a real fun way. It's fun for you to watch, but it's not fun for them to accomplish. <laughs> Damn. I don't know people I like. And Jimmy. <laughs> then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. 
But Jimmy had his like, he was sitting in the chair, turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God, everyone was looking at me and he was like Lex Luthor over there. He turns around, he stands up. Oh, and he, did the, he does the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video and he's, um, he's like, oh, stop, you're going to make me cry. And he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's not, he's just. I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says, uh, you know, as, as if rehearsed by his lawyers. Uh, yeah, you know, your mental health is the most important thing. You know, just want to make sure you're okay. And the last thing we want you to do is. I can almost hear the word Sue come out of his mouth. The S. He just, he just stopped right before it got out. Ugh. I, I did not get the 300 keg. Well, you should have. He goes, think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. You know, you were in there for XYZ days. You did XYZ challenges, so you got, you know, 100,000 some change, you know, give or take. <laughs> you know how much money I spent in taxes in, a, in, a, uh, in 2021? I spent $44,000 in taxes alone. And now I spent all that money on doing stand up. I just, I bought plane tickets to go do comedy festivals. You know, my family back home. I make jokes about family. Jimmy. Just, just make really bad, bad, horrible jokes about him. Uh, at least set in any official capacity or unofficial capacity uh, since then. And then uh, they did the video with somebody else, and they worked out the kinks. And then uh, it still got in some hot water, and I knew it would. And I've wanted to say a lot of this for a long, long, long time. And I feel good, though. That's how you get that doctor. So I just want to hop in here and show some text that Jake sent me after this interview. This is July 29, 2021, a few days after he got out of uh, solitary. How are you feeling after a few days? Better. I still couldn't sleep even a few days out, but I almost have my sleep cycle back on track. My legs and joints are good, but the blisters on my feet still hurt to walk on. Medical advice I got was not to lance them and just let them go away with time. I'm mentally still in an uneasy place, but I've gotten back on better help. My therapist is a little concerned, but we are working on things. Well, I mean, that makes sense. That makes complete sense. Okay. This is not supposed to be a traumatic life event. This is supposed to be a uh, Mr. Beast video. Hey, Jake, hope you're doing okay. Meg and I just wanted to check in on you. Hey, I'm good, and I appreciate that. I'm not exactly 100%. I feel like mentally I'm still recovering a bit, but back in therapy, and my therapist is concerned. Haha, -ha, but my legs and joints feel better, like I can walk, but my feet are still covered on those blisters, and those hurt to walk on. But I was told the best thing to do is stay off my feet and let them heal, I'm in rally with my family. Also, it'll be like a month before I get the money and they aren't giving me all the money. They're giving me what I won up to that point in the game, which was also a slap in the face. But hey, I'm out. I'm alive. Therapist who knows and cares about you. The whole thing was so fucked and honestly, fuck them for not giving you the money. Meg and I are wishing you the best with your recovery. And please feel free to reach out if you need anyone to talk to or need a place to crash in New York. Hope you're doing well, man. That video you uploaded is money. So good. I appreciate. I'm doing better physically. Mentally, I'm still kind of in a place. I still can't sleep. I've slept five hours in the past three days, marathon included. I don't know what's wrong with me. Lots of thinking too much, one might say. Hope they're taking care of you where they can. I mean, I was kind of shocked they didn't pay me for the full 25, 30 Sleep deprivation does permanent damage to the human brain. That's irreversible. Another thing. I got weird ticks. Now, I've always had sleep deprivation, but since my experiences too, it's like I got weird quirks that I can't get rid of. Like my face twitches like this now more. I don't know why. When I talk or do anything, um, my arms don't move right. Like something about the way my arms and muscles. I think somehow it affects your muscle development. Like it, it does something, but stuff doesn't work the same as it used to since. But it does something to the brain. It's like you get this constant feeling of anxiety all the time because your brain doesn't know it's okay to relax. And it takes years, months and years to be able to kind of go, 
it's like deep breaths, just learn to breathe, learn to relax. But it sucks. It does some weird shit to you. And it's again, it's irreversible. Is they paid me what I made up to that point. Suck, like man. even when we have to pull the plug for my mental health, the mechanism of the game is still at play. I'm just happy to be out. I still can't walk well, but it hurts less. And like, I'm not famous enough to burn a bridge. So at the end of the day, I'm still Jimmy's bitch. Like if I was Carl and he did that to me, I'd ruin him. And they want to do it again. That could be your leverage. If the guy breaks down also, two is better than one. Yeah, right. I told them everything they did to me that they can't do again in order to make sure the other person doesn't break down as fast. But like the way the video is meant to function is the problem. It's a bad idea, full stop. It sounds clickbaity, sounds right up Jimmy's alley, but it's morally unethical, like on every level. On yeah. the camera breaks, lights off. You can't tell Jimmy. Take the marathon. You can't tell Jimmy what's a bad idea. There are no bad ideas. It's all good ideas. I'm starting to wonder if that list. Remember, he said that in that stupid interview, right? Listen, this guy came all the way out here to give me video ideas, and none of them were good. Not one. Not one. Hmm. Starting to wonder now. Maybe they were good ideas, and he's just got bad ideas. You can't expect someone to exert themselves like that for 45 seconds of content. The challenges really made it feel dehumanizing. Felt like a parody of Mr. Beast. I felt like the homeless guy they could exploit. It felt like if Jeff Bezos had a gimp. It felt like if Jeff Bezos had a gimp. Part of me wants the footage burned and part of me thinks that there's a great horror cut in there. LMAO, he was so fake when he came in and said he cared about my mental health. They must have programmed the care about mental health updates. Uh, he said, we also don't want you to... S and I swear to our Lord and Savior, he stopped himself from saying Sue. Also, as far as like, he could have said no, he could have left at any time. I want to show the segment from uh, an internal document at Mr. Beast called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. Specifically on page 19, there's a paragraph called No does not mean no. Already insane, uh, because it's sort of, it seems to be co-opting the popular anti rape slogan. Um, which is a terrible look, given the allegations that are going to be coming out very soon. Uh, it reads... When dealing with people outside Mr. Beast Productions, never take no at face value. If we need a store to buy everything inside of, and you can call the local Dollar Tree, and the person that answers says, no, you can't film here, that literally doesn't mean shit. Talk to other employees and see if they are fans or if any have kids that are fans. Try talking to... If it's the boss of the business, they can call the police and get you removed. If they're a Karen or not, they still can. They can do that. Their boss. Their boss's boss. Have me DM them on Twitter and try their social team. If all avenues are exhausted and you are left with a no, that doesn't mean don't try the other Dollar Trees because the manager of those could be huge fans and willing to bend the rules. Oh, is what we let me manipulate you. Why don't you just call first? Get that set up. This, this is garbage. This is garbage. No. Don't stop. Because one person told me no. Stop when all conceivable options. It's actually making me ang angry. It's starting to piss me off. Improve your probability of success when producing here. It's 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 weasel shit. I'm sorry. It's pissing me off because it's written by a fucking weasel. Pushing through nose is a big component to to working on Mr. Beast. Um, and, and and the way that it manifests itself a lot of the time is like. A director might tell a producer, hey, we need um, access to 30 acres of farmland by Tuesday or we lose half a million dollars. Now, and I don't need him to show me that to get it done or you lose your job. Or, so what can I don't need this. This guy is probably very important. But again, you don't need him to see that if you're semi have some sanity in your mind. Like if you read that, it's like, yeah, no, does mean no. Respect is still respect. You don't always get to get what you want. That's how life works. If you can't learn that lesson, then you got a problem. Simple as that. Farmer saying, "Hey, I need to use your land," and the farmer might be like, "Okay, but you know, I have animals. You can't be making really loud noises. No pyrotechnics, and you got to clean everything up." So the producer sort of incentivizes to lie and say, or maybe the producer doesn't even actually know the total contents of the video. Right? Things change last second, so they're very like. They're financially incentivized to be manipulative and sort of they're put in positions where it's like, 
oh, it's either the producer's job or a civilian's job, like where it talks about, hey, maybe the manager would be willing to bend the rules. Well, you shouldn't really be pressuring civilians to bend the rules that could get them fired, you know? I'll show you a real life example. This is unused evidence from- um, Plus the manager's the under a corporate. Uh, is corporate a big fan of Mr. Beast? Is he gonna be man enough to pay up and talk to those people? No, he's gonna go to the lesser ones who are weak-minded enough to do what he wants because, oh, they want to be on one of his videos. But then they can't have their own channel plug. It's all about Mr. Beast. To really put all that together, it's like, yeah, it's, it sounds like domination. He just wants to dominate everybody. That's his end goal. Because he said, oh, he's laser focused on one goal. But I'm trying to think about, like, what the fuck is it? What is the goal? Sounds like he just wants control of everything. Really? Mr. Beast leaving trash behind and debris at film site in Aden, North Carolina. Apparently, he left a large boat in a pond as well as debris around the film site in the bottom of the He's pond. not any better than Disney. In my view... Rendered it unsafe for campers and sorry. Delayed the camp's opening date multiple Try not to talk times. over. In my view, Mr. Beast and Disney are now in the same category of terrible leadership in certain areas of their projects. Just that simple. Multiple times due to not being able to get in contact with Mr. Beast to get the stuff cleaned up out of the area. Uh, so I actually know that this is from a Mr. Beast video called Protect the Yacht. We still haven't had anything about Meadows uh, in this video says, yet, which is on the thumbnail. We did ensure the lake was completely cleaned up after this video. Did you? God subscribe so we can pass t After this video, your life is never going to be the same. So I need you to stop whatever you for the love of God. Video. We must ask T series on site um, for part of this production. I, I was at this camp, so I decided to send an email out to the camp, basically saying, "Hey, I what did he say? Subscribe to this video." For the love of God, subscribe so we can pass T series. Oh, okay, so never mind. Video that they made sure it was cleaned up. I was actually on site um, for part of this production. I, I was at this camp. So I decided to send an email out to the camp, basically saying, hey, I heard these rumors, I'm, I'm investigating a similar incidents. And the camp responded, uh, actually not denying the claims, going on to say, I am sure that there are no perfect film productions, just as there are no perfect people. I am grateful for the opportunity that we had to host the production crew, and because grace, or forgiveness, has been offered to me so freely, I will choose to offer the same. So clearly alluding to the fact that there was a wrongdoing on, on, by Mr. Beast's production team. And that's like sort of the thing is, if you're around Greenville, you know these stories of people working with Mr. Beast and it being extremely unprofessional, them not doing what they say, but they sort of get by a lot. They get their, by being you know, unprofessional. I mean, this camp offered to, to host them completely for free. And I guarantee like if you win- I never said that, you never you assume win. that they're professionals. They're not. They're not trained professionals. They just have a lot of money. But why is he not hiring professionals? If I had the money, personally, I would do some backup prep. I would hire really good people, and I wouldn't leave the place trashed. That's me. That's me. That's a normal, good general rule of thumb if you're business-oriented and you do want good rep for the future. But he, he doesn't even care, you know. That's crazy. Like he, you'd find all sorts of At least from what this guy is saying. They, they didn't clean it all up. So in the case of Jake Weddle, like, I'm sure that there were producers who were in a position of, hey, if Jake gets out early, we don't have a video, and your job is at risk. So there's a tremendous amount of pressure on top of like him being delirious from not sleeping and, and everything to, to just manipulate him to, into staying, which, which, you know, I'm sure this isn't like technically against the Geneva Convention on torture because he wasn't technically a prisoner. Like he could have left at any time, but because of the extreme pressure to stay in, it's not really a reasonable expectation that he could have just, you know, walked out. Because of the implication. I think Jimmy is a awkward kid who maybe yeah, had it a little rough growing up. I can't speak on that, but I do have empathy for it. Because uh, I, you know, had it rough growing up. And I think when you're hyper fixated on something, like I, I love stand up, he loves YouTube, everyone, you know, fixates on a thing. You know, I think he just wanted to be the best YouTuber so bad 
and because the industry's metrics, you know, rewarded some not great behavior, if you're just going on autopilot based on what the numbers say, you know, you, you can do some things that maybe aren't good, but reap reward. And I think Jimmy just did what the industry and maybe what the system that we have set up demanded. And is it really YouTube's fault? Didn't care who got I mean, you can have, you can have, you, it could be like somebody wants you to do things, but you still have choices, micro scale. He could have at least given him more like time to sleep, give him some water, check down. That's not that out of the way. I don't care. YouTube's not going to see any of that. YouTube's just going to see the cool video where you're spending 100 days incarcerated. But they're not going to see the team helping the, the contestant. Just like how he did help contestants off camera. And so I don't know. You get choices either way. Jimmy surrounds himself with really, really not so great people. And those people were the ones making the decisions. And I want to say really important. There are so many good people that work at Mr. Beast who are damn good at their jobs. Like, when Jimmy comes in and asks for something impossible, it's these people's jobs to do it. And they it sh they shouldn't be able to make it happen, and they do. And so, I don't think people wanted to talk about stuff because I didn't want my friends to lose their jobs. I don't care about my job. I don't find the whole lot. But I don't want my friends to lose their jobs. You know? I don't want anyone's reputation to be fucked. You know? But uh, just let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. My dad was uh, this, this was like a swim coach, uh, your neighborhood swim team. Everybody, everybody loved him. Everybody loved him. Behind closed doors, he's a real piece of shit. And so when stuff starts hitting the fan, what him? No. Surely. And then, you know, everyone, you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not, you know. But then the news broke, you know, that he did what he did to one of the students of the team. And it's like when that comes out, you're not surprised, you know? You just go, well, when I saw my dad in the news, I said, oh, you idiot. Like, I was like, no, I was, oh, dumb, dumbass, God damn it. Uh, but I wasn't surprised, and it was just uh, consequences happening to somebody who was really good at avoiding them for a long time, and I don't know, everybody, everybody loves Jimmy, and behind closed doors, he is not super great, and that image is cultivated purposefully and intentionally, and it's branding, it's marketing, it's YouTube. Okay, so I guess yeah, just one final question on sure. a serious note. Uh, obviously, the Ava Chris Tyson drama, and um, you know that's a known issue of traditional media. Uh, Why are we zooming in on the police jacket? We get it. Hear about any uh, sexual misconduct at the company? It's crazy. I, I probably hung out with Ava the most out of the main cast, uh, just because uh, I was on Beast Hacks. Uh, now Beast reacts. I don't know if it's still out. Uh, that was a lot of fun because it was just you know, being silly and goofy in front of the camera. And uh, Ava was the only person who was willing to film. Everybody else was too busy or didn't want to. And I was just trying to do my job. Sometimes there'd be like an offhanded joke. That's a little gross. I mean, I'm a stand-up, so I'm very desensitized to that. I didn't hear anything that was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like when I saw, the reason I messaged you instead of, talking to reporters sweetly like I have been was when I saw the discord stuff for the I never because when I when I got there it was like 2019 so I guess if the timelines add up that would have been like handled for lack of a better term and then they and then they started bringing more people on you know maybe they thought they had that under the rug you know but, all right we handled that now let's bring in some writers you know um, and when I saw it all that stuff start coming out and the potentiality 
as of this moment of recording. You know, I know this has been happening fast and something's been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have been in those Discord chats, or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me, if you're going to make fun of my dad, I don't care what happens to me or my career or reputation after this. I had to, I had to say some stuff. So, whatever happens, happens at this point. Uh, outside of it, Chris Tyson. Did you he should be a streamer. I, I could see it. Is it? Oh, gosh, I forgot it. Jake. I almost want to say James. I'm sorry. Weddle. He, he should be... Jake Weddle should be a streamer. He's got the vibe. He's got the vibe. I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I, I if it could be investigated. That'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk. But I've heard things. Yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy was covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. Yeah, right. You have the tangible proof that he knew but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender on the registry and everything who worked there. And, like, you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry. Sorry, I'm moving my hands and touching it. myself. Like, I, I, I do that. I touch my beard. When I'm, when I'm like physically uncomfortable or stressed out or thinking about stuff that is like uncomfortable, I do that. I just, uh. After you're on the, you, that, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated, that's one thing. You know, like if you do your time, that's fine. I, I think there should be read the rehabilitation in this country. But that guy, from what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people this is why i stopped shopping okay so this Amazon. this is what you too. don't spend another it's all coming from Amazon. one person so if he well we don't know exactly the victim age but that's still really bad but if it's just one former person imagine if he interviews a whole bunch of these people over time you know how crazy it's going to be when he has these in-person interviews and I just didn't want to start that anymore. Um, and it starts all lining up, all the different people saying the same things. Yeah, it's gonna be really crazy after a while. He's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. And you know that he knew and because he'll be in videos, he'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around, and whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are in registered sex offender? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender with a physical mask? Like, do I have to... Is, how, is it more on the nose, or...? It's on the nose. Why they let him go? Because there's this rule in court. Yeah. So I don't know why they let him go, but he didn't leave at one point. Even if that guy didn't do anything, they still knew about it, and he was still around. And what if he's one of the people in the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. It's like, why, 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 why do you call him Delaware? I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently, they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. That's his nickname? That's weird. Colloquially? Like, you know, yeah, it's Delaware. Don't ask him why. Yeah. The fuck? And Jimmy Nova? If you likely heard that he didn't know is astronomically low. Okay, so finally I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line is a, a different former Mr. Beast employee uh, talking about Delaware 
Um, also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record mm -hmm. off the registry. And that's what actually like sparked this person to start recording. Well, they got to use that voice filter. They could have just done the low voice filter. The fuck? That is very annoying to listen to. I apologize. Well, maybe if they did a low voice, they learn how to reverse it. And then they might like retone it and then match it to somebody. So maybe that's also a good idea to make it sound super shitty. Whatever. Okay, so Reed is Mr. Reese's former manager who was in the last video telling Jimmy, you know, hey, don't promote gambling to children. Uh, so, you know, I think I think Reed's taken uh, two W's this month, you know, uh, don't promote gambling to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. Also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that the bull. wouldn't know. But, you know, I know that that's I'm sure that's the defense you'll go with. So I'll just say preemptively, like, you know, if somehow Jimmy didn't know about Delaware, I think it's still such an extreme level of negligence. Like what you're not doing background checks. You're not everyone at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. Um, I, I think that needs more of an explanation than just saying. I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Jimmy, I think we need an explanation from you or, or you know, your, your lawyers and, and PR people and representatives and spokespersons and um, on how you could have not known that there was an offender uh, at a high level in your company. And while you respond to that, why not just respond to the allegations of, of rigging contest videos and selling fake signatures, running illegal lotteries, um, you know, the, the dangerous conditions on the set of Beast Games, you should address those too. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just let us know. Okay, that was my interview with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle. Uh, I, I know he will be coming out with a uh, longer cut of this interview as well as other content. Um, so I just wanted to just, just me, does he need a haircut? But it kind of it kind of works. It's like he needs a haircut. I need a haircut too. We're on the same boat now. Jake Weddle, <laughs> top link in the description. He's the CEO of Exposing, right? It's got to be that. I've waited a long time to talk about a lot of this publicly, so thank you for doing what you're doing. I see an old man in that. He's like, I've been waiting a long time. I see, I see an older man. He's going to be all right. So long. All right. Goodbye. Special thanks to Jake Weddle. Alright. I'm not doing this for views, but I want it to get views at the same time for traction. But it's not gonna be me that's gonna get the get it all going, but if I can get somebody to pay attention to this, good. I'm adding Mr. Beast and his team to my Hall of Shame. They're going in here. Or people that are involved. I'm adding him. It's going to start tomorrow. Or later today, actually, since it's 3 in the morning, sorry. Later today, I'm going to start pulling out some, some art for you guys. We're going to start talking about it more, and I'm going to make fun of him is what I'm going to do. I don't like him. I don't care. It's not about the video either. I... Don't like him. Just, again, back to the basics of, you know, cause and effect, right and wrong. He does only certain things to get views. 
and the things he's willing to do is like, hey, I want to make you happy so that I look good. That's it. You know, he's not there to make you happy outside of the loading screen. He's an NPC. Mr. Beast is all like, he, you could tell. You could see it on his face that he's there like, eh, 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 eh. I mean, I'm just going from a gut instinct, like what I know about people. And I've met a few real sociopaths, you know, they do have a certain behavior in front of you and there's certain behavior that you don't see, you know, and some of them don't hide it as much, but there's a, there's there, that could be the case. He might not actually have had that bad of a childhood. He might not really have any reason to be the way he is. And he just, he just purely is, you know, a real one, like a genuine sociopath who has a lot of intelligence. It's really rare, you know, maybe he was hiding it and it's just like, he's like, oh, I can be more and more comfortable being myself now and do the things I want to do to people. And, you know, that's what people want to watch. I also don't want to be mean, but it's true. It says more about you than than a lot of things too it's like okay oh, it does say a lot about him but what you put your attention into what you feed can be really unhealthy and i do think these videos are unhealthy making things about money making things about gambling and it's all money where does it go oh more just to make more videos it's not going anywhere it's not doing anything for anybody it's just overinflated. And at least he's he's showing it off to everyone. He's flexing, he's showing it off to everybody. It sucks. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, I think I'm gonna do another stream tonight, just a gaming stream separate from this. Um, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna take a little break. What I'm gonna do actually after this this small stream.